Today we're gonna turn your 2D original characters into 3D. So I ask you guys to submit drawings of your OC with a description and you guys absolutely killed it with the submissions. There were a lot of you so yeah thank you. That's free content baby! So today's art was submitted to me on Instagram by the artist called Brace Art. Honestly his works are just insane. They're like top-notch quality so please check him out. So in this video I'm going to be doing two styles because in my submission guidelines I mentioned that if you have a distinct unmistakable style I will attempt to recreate a close-up portrait of your work in your style in 3D. Why do I do this to myself? Okay, so this is the character's description. I've broken these down into little tags. So from these, we have purple ambient, fog, sunset, vegetation, no signs of life, no lights turned on in buildings besides his own, rundown buildings, cars. Well, that doesn't mean that I have to use every single one of them. I'm just asking myself all these questions to help me roughly build the world that the character is in. Plus, Brace already submitted a really solid illustration of the environment, so that will really help. So I did a bit of a draw over to help me better identify the different parts in the illustration and here is a diagram that I ended up with. Anyway, when I saw the submission and I saw the character description, I immediately thought of The Last of Us 2. Ellie and Dina was on a horse running through the vegetation. There are a lot of overgrown vegetation, cars that are in the overgrown vegetation, the street elements, the street objects all covered in vegetable. So clearly this was once a street that is now covered in Vegemite. In terms of look development, I brought this iconic shot from the movie Blade Runner 2049 into Photoshop and I just did a simple color correction and changed the hue. These are some other references that I've gathered. Alright, so let's start with the cube and subdivide it to 4 and we're gonna go into sculpt mode and turn on the symmetry and begin sculpting. So the goal here is to block out the primary shapes and it's really helpful to keep the poly count low as it's much easier to, to change the form of the mesh. So I'm gonna remesh if necessary necessary but I'm gonna keep the poly count fairly low. By the way I have Joe's head here as a reference. Joe Mama. I'm just gonna sculpt the collar area here since we're gonna throw a jacket over this. Basically I start everything else with a sphere and just roughly try to capture the shape of what I'm trying to create and uh, always check the sculpt in multiple angles since it's 3D. Join these two blobs and remesh. Alright so let's add some folds and some jacket details. Keep in mind I'm still keeping things really loose here. Oh, and I'm using the draw shop tool to create these folds. Okay, so I'm going to create another cube for the backpack and I'm using subdiv and shift E to create creases for the sharp edges, cylinder for the oxygen tank, and once again a sphere for the pants. And of course, forget to turn on symmetry and then regret later. <sighs> How like that? Okay, I'm gonna use the grab brush and pull up the collar, draw sharp tool and add the crease. And now with the mask brush, I'm gonna mask over a portion of the face to create the mask. Yeah, mask to make the mask. So I'm gonna use a sphere and block out the hair proxy. It's gonna look bad at first. It may even look like a supreme leader, but just trust the process. And with time and a lot of grab brush tool, It'll be good enough. Ah, now the hand, my biggest enemy. But anyway, we're gonna use a cube, add some edge loop, drag around the points, same thing, subdivide, shift E. Fingers, Ugh. we're gonna use a cube, extrude, 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 add crease. Uh, that's good enough to begin sculpting. Okay, so although we're still blocking out, I'm just gonna sculpt in the details because we're gonna be duplicating the fingers. So I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna resize and reposition the hand. Same thing for the thumb, reposition, resize. And now I'm gonna touch up the palm. So now I'm gonna unify the hand and the thumb using the boolean tool. I'm not gonna do it for the fingers though because I still want to move them around. So in sculpt mode, I'm gonna use the post brush to move the fingers around to better match the illustration. Now the same thing with the arm and I'm gonna use the grab brush to fix any unwanted deformation. So now we're gonna proceed with refining everything, the sculpt, uh, we're gonna model details such as the glasses, the, the pipe that goes uh, along down the mask, the backpack straps, etc. So I want a clean cut on the legs, so I'm using a cube to boolean away the parts that I don't need. I'm just gonna add the folds on the pens real quick. So normally for objects like bags, I would model them out, but I figured that we're gonna be using cell shaders, so I don't think it would matter that much. Okay, so let's put in this image of the M1 Garand and get the right proportions. I'm gonna use a plane and just follow the silhouette of the gun. Extrude, 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 solidify, and boom, we got a rifle. So I'm gonna apply the same principle uh, for the accessories and the the rest of the gun. So 
So I made a really simple rig to turn the head. I used a cylinder to make a proxy of the pipe, which will serve as a guide later on. I'm gonna duplicate the hand, flip it, and now we got a right hand. Nice. Same thing again, post brush, grab brush. As you can see, I have a reference of my own hand holding my wallet. Now for the hair, we're gonna use a path curve and a circle curve to taper the shape of the curve. Scale the tip down and now we got ourselves a strand of hair. Now just tweak the curves, duplicate, 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 and then flip it, and then pop it, pull it, twist it, done. You got a full set of hair. So I lost the footage of how I made the pipe because my recording software decided to be a little bit. But anyway, let me show you how it's done. So let's take a path. Let's rotate this 90 degrees create a cylinder, bring it way down, apply the scale. First things first, I'm gonna make a fun little pattern for you guys to see. Let's just select the side edges, bevel it, then I don't know, just, just be creative with your pattern here. Go to face mode, extrude along normals. Next, I'm gonna create an array modifier. Make sure it's going down. Let's increase this array count. Then I'm gonna use a curve modifier and apply it to my curve. There you go. Now all you gotta do is just increase the array, play around with your curve, and boom! You got a churro. All right, so this is actually my first time doing cell shading. I'm just following this tutorial on YouTube, link in the description. I'm just color picking the colors that are already on the illustration. I'm just gonna repeat the same process over and over again uh, on the entire model. And then I'm gonna cover it with a grease pencil to replicate the hatching and that's it. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned for the final results. All right, so let's move on to the next piece. Here are some of the sketches I made. So the process is very similar to the first piece. I am first going to block out the primary shapes. As for the character design, since I'm going for the chibi or children's illustration type style, I wanna make sure that the face of the character resembles the shape of a bean. And as for the proportions of the body, you can think of it as like a little child. And if they raise their hands, you'll notice that their hands don't make past the their heads. So that's normally how I gauge the proportions for this style I'm going for. Anyway, if you're enjoying the content so far, do consider dropping a like. If you want to watch more videos like this in the future, maybe subscribe. Any thoughts you want to let me know, leave it in the comments section down below. All right, cool. Let's make another churro. Too big. Scale it down. Again, again. Okay. Ruined my day. Shut up, you spoiled brat. <gasps> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. As for the car, I subdivided it and I remeshed it. And I did a rough sculpt of where I want the windows, the doors, basically the accessories of the car to be before I modeled over it. As for the wheels, I'm just gonna use a cylinder, insert, extrude a thousand more times and we're done. Now just beat up your car with the sculpt tool, maybe flatten your tires and then there you go, you have yourself a post-apocalyptic abandoned wrecked car. All right, so let's do some hair. So now that we have our hair proxy, that is really going to help us a lot when it comes to identifying which areas we want to select and where we select will basically be where the hair will grow. Now I'm going to assign a hair particle system onto the base model and also we need a hair shader applied to the base model. Now I'm going to tweak some settings. You can pause the video if it's too fast. Oh, and make sure you apply scale before you fiddle with any settings. So now I'm going to turn the hair emission down to zero and I'm going to apply the hair strands one at a time. So these hair strands will basically direct the flow of the hair and then later on when we turn the hair children on, it will spread out really nicely and within the faces that we selected earlier too. I'm going to turn on the mirror and topology mirror before I apply these hair strands and whoops, I'm going to turn up the viewport display as well. So how far you place your hair strands apart from each other will determine the size of the hair clumps. So for now I'm using the simple mode under children to get a more precise representation of the hair clumps and when I'm done with placing the hair strands I will change it to the interpolated mode to get a more even spread. I normally set my diameter root to 0.1 and my diameter scale to 0.03 and this is where applying scale actually matters because if you don't then the values will be way off. Go to Eevee and under curves you want to change the curve shape to strip. That way you can preview the size of the hair strands in viewport shading. I'm going to turn up the hair clump to one to get the hair tips to meet. Shape basically changes the curve of the hair clump. I'm going to leave it at 1.5. So roughness basically freezes up the hair and the threshold limits the number of hair affected. Here is a quick look at the hair shader. Pause the video if you need to. It's meant to be rendered in cycles only. All right, we're almost there guys. We're almost there. Just hang in there a little bit longer, okay? So quite some time ago, I was into photogrammetry and in the past, I've collated 
included quite a bit of assets that I could just now drag and drop into my scene. So these assets have been sitting in the shelf for quite some time now and I finally got to use them. So yay. That plus some amazing assets from Polyhaven and Botanic, we can now decorate the scene. So all there's left to do is to color grade. I normally color grade my works in Photoshop, but for this case, I decided to do a short loop. So I had to use DaVinci Resolve. Lastly, I was like, hey, let's waste more time. So I decided to compose my own uh, Blade Runner-esque background music, and that's it. And this is how it turned out.